uh, similar speeds uh, was the first part of that building block. fun with the robot from time to time, too. Mm -hmm. but, uh, so this kind of gives you an idea of the kind of... <laughs> Actually, we took out most of the Matrix sequence because uh, management didn't like it. But, uh, <laughs> but we kind of pared it down, and you know, at 2 in the morning, it's kind of interesting. You know. <laughs> but this kind of shows you what kind of workspace the robot encompasses. You know, it's a very similar workspace that you and I have. Um, Again, we thought that was very important. Uh, so the motions, the inherent motions, the intrinsic motion that the robot's able to produce matches that of a human quite nice. It has, actually has a lot more range of motion than a human does. For example, I can't turn my wrist 360 degrees, but it can. I can't turn my neck all the way around. I probably could, but you know, it would, it'd have to replace me soon after that. But this robot can. Um, but another key ingredient to creating this human-robotic partnership uh, to be, uh, that will be successful is you need a certain amount of dexterity. And so we really went after the uh, we really went after the hand design on this robot. What separates this robot among a lot of other robots for this particular class is the amount of uh, motion, the amount of dexterous motion, the amount of the amount of range of motion that our fingers has, the ability to manipulate those objects, and the kind of grasp forces that we can create on those objects. And so that really is a key discriminator that you don't necessarily see in other robots of this similar weight class. And that weight class is very important. Like I said, we wanted to create a robot that had a similar size and shape as, uh, as a human. It's a little on the larger side. Um, the biceps are smaller than the, uh, the largest recorded size that Arnold gave when he was winning this new universe. And it has the, uh, the wingspan that's less than Yao Ming. So it falls within human data, albeit on the larger <laughs> side of human data. <laughs> but so like I said, we built up this range of motion story. We've got this, uh, this dexterity motion. So then we have to tackle what's, what, what those key ingredients are to working close and safe with people. And so this manipulator is very different from a lot of other uh, robots that you might come in contact with. It's not a positionally controlled manipulator. In industrial robotic systems like painting robots, welding robots, uh, general assembly robots for manufacturing like pick and place machines, they're very highly precise positioning devices. But, but what comes with that is this uh, inability to control